get ready for a lot of spiritual splitting, a lot of effects on your personal life, a lot of things happening out in the world per usual. But I think we're going to become more and more aware of it because something is breaking open this week. Hello, everybody. I'm Michelle Patterson with Angel Souls. I'm an angel medium, spiritual practitioner. And what I'm going to be doing today is I'm bringing messages forward from archangels about what we need to know. What do we need to be prepared for? And as I was getting ready to sit down and do this message for you, it was all about being spiritually prepared. This isn't like a a new message from them necessarily, but it's more of things that have been spoken about for years and years. Now it's happening. It's here. It's here. All right. So please ease into this, right? Listen to this very carefully. If you have not watched, especially the last two weeks of posting, okay, there was one video per week. Go back and watch those. Those are very important because archangels deliver messages in, can I call it a dosage? In the dosage that we can handle, right? So these are building. You want to make sure that you have watched that. And even if you have watched it, go back again. Because every time you watch one of these videos, even if it's one from like 10 years ago, you're going to pick up a very different message than the first time you heard it. All right. So keep that in mind. So what is going on in the coming week? I have to put this disclaimer in there. Angels and archangels do not work with linear time. That is a human construct. We talk about this all the time. I heard that phrase before. Whatever. Okay. (laughs) In our duality consciousness, our third dimensional ego consciousness brains we see everything in linear time. This is where we get the idea that there are past lives when in actuality that uh, soul expression, if you want to see it that way, is existing at the same time this one is. We just perceive it as being in the past. So when angels are saying this week's message, it doesn't mean just this week. It could have started a little bit before. It'll definitely stretch beyond this week. It has value. Don't treat these like throwaway messages. These are not in here to just tickle the ego. Oh, that's so interesting. Let's see if that plays out. And then you just move on to the next hit of a message. No, these these are not those messages. Okay, you got me? Okay. <laughs> so I want to also say thank you to everybody who has subscribed. It makes it possible for me to do this work. So again, thank you very, very much. Now, as far as the message goes, I'm going to let you know, we got Gabriel, we got Michael, we have Zadkiel. Zadkiel is coming in quite a bit. And when Zadkiel, that's Z-A-D-K-I-E-L, when Zadkiel shows up, there is a path opening. Why? Why do we say that? That is because Zadkiel helps us transmute. Okay, that's, that's his big buzzword, transmute. So we have to take things, if you've ever heard of the violet flame, it's, it's sort of that energy. We have to take these things that once would have hurt us or once would have um, dragged our energy down or spent, we spent too much energy on it, taking those moments and transmuting. So this is very different than hardening your heart and just not caring anymore. It's more of a realization of that's not serving me. Um, That's not serving the highest good of everyone involved. What good is it going to do to act this way or what good is it going to do to be cold towards others we'll talk about that. Um, the friendly factor, we're going to talk about that. (laughs) But when we start realizing all of this, we realize what needs to go away. Yes. And so that's kind of what the violet flame does for us. It sort of burns up things that are extraneous wastes of energy. I guess the waste of energy would be that anyway, but you know what I'm saying? So (laughs) cleaning up our energy field and, 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 parting ways. I'm hearing a lot of parting ways. So this gets a little bit complicated uh, because this is going to come as a a very big, sudden, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this job. I'm done with this relationship. I'm done with these friends. I'm done being treated like this. I'm done having to prove my worth. I'm done being the scapegoat. I'm done being the punching bag. I'm done feeling like a victim. And that is where 
you know, this, and you all have guardian angels on your team. Okay. Now, some people deny those guardian angels and they call in different types of beings. Ugh, we're not going there. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you. We will not. I just realized my shirt is all askew. Whatever. Okay. We're, we're good. We're fine. We're going to be all right. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you can tap in and work with these angels. Now, I know a lot of you know this uh, and you do work with your angels. What I do see, I, you know, I do personal readings for people and I do one-on-one -on -one courses teaching people how to connect with their angels. I have a whole series on teaching angel mediumship. And one of the things that I consistently see is the ego approach to receiving angelic messages. Now, this is important for you for this week specifically your angels are on deck, okay? They're coming in as close as they can, as close as your energy field will allow them to come to give you a heads up, to let you know it's going to be all right, to let you know that you're maybe suffering needlessly. And for a lot of you, it's going to be, hey, that definition that somebody else drilled into you, that's not who you are. And no, you do not need to below, you know, lower yourself to make somebody else feel more important. And what's more, you do not need to be under the control of darkness. Now that's going to have a lot of meaning for a lot of different people because we see that playing out. We see that darkness playing out, especially, again, I always got to be careful with the words I use in these videos because they'll get flagged and whatever. But, um, you know, certain situations that people get into with their love partnerships, or maybe it's a family member who's psychologically abusive, right? We can't overlook that. That is actually, if you're, if you're looking at darkness and how it works, that is the weapon of choice. That's why people who have completely broken from the light, you know, there might, there might still be a glimmer of something animating them a little bit, but mostly they're animated by fear, darkness, insecurity, and it makes them a little evil, it makes them evil. And they want to do evil things, uh, including, you know, verbal abuse, God forbid, if it's physical abuse, you know, I mean, God forbid on all of it, but all of these little mind games, there's a big distraction going on. And that is people being paranoid about well, that messaging is being fed to us by corporations. So watch out. You know, it's good to wake up to that because, of course, that is happening. Lots of messaging. I'm a woman, okay? And I, when I was young and my entire life, always dealt with weight issues. Take a guess on what my self-worth is supposed to be. <laughs> All right? Even though people who are trying to tell me how to live have never had to live in my body and, and deal with the things that I've dealt with, they're going to tell me where I've gone wrong and how I need to correct that, right? So there's a lot of this, um, you know, you need to handle your weight and you need to look like this. So you need this product. You're aging. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, <laughs> so you need this product. Of course, that is going on. And of course, people who are ruthless, narcissistic, even sociopathic, they get put on a pedestal. Yes, they are the CEOs. Well, this is not new information. I know. But it bears repeating, okay? So this is a time where we're breaking all this open and we are freeing ourselves. Now, I'm recording this shortly after, here in the U.S., we have Black Friday, okay? And a lot of people are on social media showing that the stores were empty. Unfortunately, so I guess there was some boycotting going on or people just flat out couldn't afford it um, to go out and spend all their money. But unfortunately, they were also boycotting small businesses, and that's where that goes into this message for this week, where we just <laughs> miss the point sometimes, or we overcorrect. Why? We're duality consciousness beings striving to learn how to be balanced and harmonized. And we are going to be clunky. We're going to be tripping over our own feet. It's going to happen. All right. But we need to be willing to look at where the errors have been made and try something new. Now, talking about the friendly factor. This is something that is, I think it's a perfect example of something that 
gets downplayed or dismissed. If you are a friendly, a genuinely friendly person, I'm not talking about covert narcissism. I'm not talking about, um, you know, social narcissists who are just trying to act like, look at me. I'm just so shiny faced for everybody. No, I'm talking about somebody who really does things out of the kindness of their heart. If I were to pass you in the street, I feel it out to see, because sometimes like people are just kind of in their own little world and like, and you know, maybe don't bother them. They're thinking about something, whatever. But if we make eye contact, I am always going to smile at you and it's going to be genuine. People out there are so broken. Hang with me. Hang with me because yes, I'm sure your brain went a certain direction. A lot of people's brains would go a certain direction. What's the big deal? Who cares? We should care. And this is why. That little exchange or going up and opening the door for someone. And no, it doesn't have to be a man opening the door for a woman. I open the door for people all the time and you ought to see them go from like, you know, like kind of like head down, eyes downcast and just kind of running their errands to, oh, thank you. And they go on in. How many times have I smiled at someone? How many times have you smiled at someone and they just looked at you like they're vacant? Pay attention to that. Or they give you a dirty look because they don't like something about you when they don't even know you. And how often, comment down below, how many of you as I'm talking about this going, who cares? Oh, this is so dumb. Why are we even talking about this? You're part of the problem and we're going to continue to talk about you. You may want to stick around. We don't show each other kindness. We do, as a, again, not new information, I know, but a reminder that it's okay to smile back at someone. Now, obviously, if it's a creeper, don't do that, okay? Like, don't, don't okay? <laughs> but for the most part, I just don't think there's anything wrong with being cooperative with one another. And that also means, oh, I ended up going into a store uh, and there was a lot of, um, not competition per se, entitlement, entitlement. I'm entitled to take up this entire aisle. I'm entitled to take my bad mood out on you, right? And that's just it. Instead of being cooperative and being in the spirit of, hey, we're all in this together, Let's show each other a little warmth and kindness. We've been turned against each other. And it's evidenced in even the smallest things that we have to do. I read people for a living. Sorry, a little cough break there for a second. It is so funny to me how we have been trained to think that kindness is weakness that you'll become a target. Um, you have to act tough. That I learned living in New York City, living in Los Angeles, you know, keep your eyes down, don't look at each other and all this. And I guess, you know, this message, you have to adapt it to where you are. If I were in New York City uh, and I'm in an area where like it's dark out and there's not that many people around, probably not going to smile at the guy who's like creeping in the alley. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what going back to that original thing of like, you know, don't invite that in. But what I'm saying here is on the daily, don't look at everybody like they are competition, like they're going to take something away from you. And if they turn out to be one of those humans that's running on darkness, I swear to God, did somebody just say running on Duncan? Did your mind go there? Yeah. Comment down below. So... <laughs> If, if you are dealing with someone like that, you're going to know very quickly. This is part of why Zadkiel is in here. Zadkiel helps us transmute. He helps us take things that uh, isn't working anymore and turn it into something useful. Okay. Something that like if, if you're going out in the world and someone's being rude, obnoxious, what have you, you know me, I always say set that boundary, but 
then do you get upset about it later? I am one of those people, I will admit it, I fully get upset when people are not nice to one another. It, it makes me, it kind of taps into that little warrior side of me and I want to call it out. But these, and some of the things that we're coming to realize uh, is that these people are too far gone. That that definitive split, now it's not it's not all settled, but there was a definitive split and some people have just fallen on either side or the other. And these people are, if they're in darkness over here, they're not likely to jump unless something really big and catastrophic happens to them. And then they're just going to run to the light because they're scared. They want help. You see what I'm saying? Now, I know what I'm saying makes it sound like, oh, they're a lost cause. Um, they are where they are. They're doing what they're doing. And we're realizing more and more we don't have, need to be a part of that. So going back to the friendly factor, just, you're not trying to go overboard. You know, you're not trying to be the creepy friendly person. You're saying, hey, hello, you know, let's chill out, okay? But like, go with an, uh, an open heart, a warm, open heart. And if someone is, you know, trying to do what you're trying to do, maybe you help each other out. And I'll give you an example of a friendly factor. It was really cute. Uh, I was in a store with my family. My family went off on one and I was over at another end. We came together and this lady comes around the corner. She's holding up a teddy bear. And she goes, teddy bears? Weren't you guys the ones looking for the teddy bears? And I looked at my family because I thought maybe they had had a conversation. And they're kind of looking at me like, did you have a conversation? And we were like, oh, I don't think that was us. And I was like, oh, oh, my mistake. I thought that was you. But how sweet. How kind. <laughs> she had overheard someone saying they were looking for the teddy bears. She found them, thought she found the people, and wanted to let us know, or the people that she had been overhearing, let them know that she had found them. That's what I'm talking about here. And people who are in the darkness are going to laugh at that. Um, but, but again, there's a reason why I'm giving all these mundane examples, like the store, because we overlook it. We have been trained to be numb to that and to ignore it and pretend like it's no big deal. It is a big deal. It is a big indicator of where we are. It's a big indicator where you are personally. It's a big indicator where the world is. I can also tell you that while out with my family, we had someone tailgating us. Go do your scientific research on this. Narcissists, I would say cluster B personality disorder people are more likely to be reckless behind the wheel than someone who doesn't have that. Makes sense, doesn't it? Sociopaths don't care. Psychopaths don't care. Narcissists only care about themselves and having power. So, yeah. So go and do your own research on that. You'll see what I mean. So people are showing their demons. They are showing um, what's going on with them mentally as well. I caught myself plenty of times starting to feel angry that people were driving recklessly just trying to control and really to like this is me as a human this isn't coming from the angels when someone's being reckless and you think it's funny um like you're not right in the head I said it let me say it again so it really lands for you you're not right in the head there's nothing funny about that absolutely nothing funny about endangering people nothing funny or brave see here's another thing too people going out there and be like ah it's not that big a deal you worry too much no, guys, that that's a red flag. That's red flag behavior that we need to wake up to. And that's just one example, okay? But I found myself getting really angry. I have my family in the car. And I'm very protective of them. And in the one case, I said that there was a minivan. I mean, that could have been, that's typically a family vehicle. Is there a family in there? Are there children in there that you're putting in danger? And what's more, you're teaching them to be that way? We see a lot of that too. That's how the darkness is also doubling down. They're trying to teach their kids real quick. Teach them real quick before people find them out. How to be like them. This is going to shake your world. It's happening now. And we're going to see a lot of things fall apart. Things not working. Catching yourself. Again, that's the biggest part of this. The self-realization, self, the, the self-awareness, the accountability. The accountability. And being willing to say, you know what, I do that. 
I, I do that. I get wound up. The warrior in me kind of gets lit up and I'm ready to go after something. And we have to be discerning here. We have to do critical thinking. Sometimes, yeah, you got to set a boundary. Sure. But just when we say pick your battles, that gets tricky. Because again, that's not just about enabling either. We're duality consciousness means we overcorrect, right? We do it all the time. So I'm thinking, I'm going to give another silly example, but again, in the store, um, out with my family yesterday and I walked into an aisle and this woman was already in the aisle taking up the entire thing. You know how this goes. And she literally gave me a dirty look. Now I'm not trying to even get past her. I'm just in the aisle. Hang with me here. This is an example of what's going on. She gives me a dirty look for being in the aisle. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then I saw her kind of nudge her cart up. She's trying to like, she doesn't need to be where I'm at, where it other ends, but she's trying to come into my space. Now, here's one of the things spiritually that you can do when someone is doing that. They're trying to intimidate you. There's an energy exchange there. And if your ego brain is saying, oh my God, this is so petty. You're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. Okay. This is what happens. This is how humans try to mess with other humans. Energy fields. Okay. She's coming into my bubble. Okay. <laughs> She's coming into my bubble and I could feel it. And again, I, I would like to think that I can speak on this. I read people for a living and have done so for many, many years. I could feel her intentions. I could feel what, and she was not a good energy. This was, oh, she was, she was something. Okay. <laughs> she was something. I don't know what her problem was, but whatever. So she tries to do this and I'm standing there and I'm looking at something. I could feel her. I could feel the intrusion. When that occurred, I, I do look, uh, and again, this is spiritual talk. So we're talking from a spiritual aspect. I do sort of a quick, uh, I don't know what to call it, like grounding. So if you imagine a light in your heart and the energy is going down through all your lower chakras into the earth, up through all your upper chakras to the divine, and the energy gathers here, it expands. Try that. Try that. It's funny. It's so funny. And I love it when people are so like logistically minded that they think they've got everything down pat and they're <laughs> so in denial about anything else that they can't wrap their minds around uh, to watch this in action. Because when that happened, literally, I'm not touching the woman. I'm not touching her. She took a couple of steps back. And then this is my favorite one. If you have been a private client of mine then you know that I teach this as well, the hematite. So some people, especially angel practitioners, are always telling you to put golden light around you. Um, yeah, you can do that, sure. But if you don't know, I, I don't know if this is relevant, but if you, know, if you know gold as a metal, it's actually soft, okay? Um, golden light is high frequency. Yes, that can kind of push people back, especially if they're dark and it's kind of too much for them. I'm making it sound like it's so simplistic and like kindergarten, oh, you're bad people, <laughs> you're dark, but I don't know, I don't have the language for it, I don't tell you, I didn't make the rules, okay, but <laughs> you know, you can find that that might work, but if the person is looking to get a charge of light to sustain themselves, right, they're, they're gravitating towards that, that can make them come, they're not going to enter your field you know what I'm saying like they're not going to come real close necessarily but they're still going to be a bother they're still going to be there because they're maybe I don't know there's an attraction there that even they can't understand so what I like to do is I like to use the hematite okay it's just a it's a thing to envision that then puts an energy of like don't mess with me I'm not to be messed with hematite is reflective it's protecting, it's uh, grounding, right? And it can, you know, push the energy back, seal off your energy field. It can also uh, fill in any places, again, forgive the language, I know what this must sound like, but where there might be a wobble, right? Or an indentation, or again, I don't know how to like get this across necessarily, but this will kind of solidify that. This is one where... You know, this will get someone pushed back. But in this moment, 
I did the hematite, okay, and she, I did the clearing, the clearing really quick, and then it just kind of pushed her back. Well, this woman was, um, uh, she had a demon in her. Yeah, this is what it's like to read people and do this kind of work. I know it sounds crazy to some, but just because you either don't do it or you've never heard that before, doesn't doesn't negate its existence. Okay, so this woman had very ugh, she had a lot of darkness in her, and she stepped back, and you could tell that kind of irritated her. Mind you, neither one of us like she took a couple of steps back. She had moved her cart forward and then took a, step, a couple of steps back. She's the only one moving. I'm not moving. And I was away from her. I'm right where I needed to be. She's like a few feet down. She just didn't like that I was in the same aisle as her. Yeah. Yeah. Sit with that for a second. Be aware. So what does she do when I'm doing this whole shielding? She is one of them that doubled down. So after she took a couple steps back, she made sure to bring that cart right behind me. And even though she had room, made sure it brushed up against the back of me. And I did it more. And she's like, excuse me. I did it more. And I said, oh, you're fine. I was being fake in that moment. But listen, hey, you know, we do what we got to do. Right? I was dealing with a beast. Okay. So forgive me. All right. If, if you got a lesser situation, you handle it the way you think is right and calm and peaceful as much as you can. But I, in that moment, felt like this woman was going to get even more antagonized if I just ignored her. Like she was really not going to like that. So I said, you're fine. And I didn't move and I wasn't bothered. And she paused for a second behind me, like she was about to say something else. And I kept doing this and she finally got out of the aisle. Now it was not about winning the aisle in a store. Okay. It was not about that. This is two human beings carrying two very different expressions of energy in a tight space. And that's just a perfect example of what we're trying to get across here. You cannot ignore this anymore. And quite frankly, if you do ignore this, then you're probably like that woman. You're probably going around antagonizing people. You don't even know what you have or what you're playing host to anymore. But you will after this week. You're going to get a lot of backlash. Uh, not backlash. That's not the right word. Feedback from the universe about where you stand. For some... It means that your heart gets a break. For others, you start to break. And it's not the universe breaking you. It's you breaking yourself. Because you weakened yourself the moment you took in that energy thinking it was going to give you power. The moment you believed its promises. Now you're there. Now some of you are like selling the soul. People do it all the time. They do it way more often than you realize. So this is going to be a fun week, huh? Uh, <laughs> per usual, I want you to leave your comments down below. Let me know how this is shaking out for you. Do the self-examination. If you have been trying to do good in this world, trying to be a good person, you get stepped on. Uh, your time is coming and it's not so that you can get revenge. If you're in the light, you don't want revenge. Um but you just want to feel that sense of normalcy or being at ease or being in the flow. It's going to be there. Now, people who consider themselves, I mean, yeah, this is the longest video ever, I realize, but we do need to talk about people who hide in the light. They're not letting me go. I was going to end the video, but they're coming in and saying, nope, got to talk about this. People who hide in the light, um, they are actually, not all of them. I don't want to say all of them are fake. But a lot of them are, and they are presenting as if they are a spiritual guru or something like that, but they're actually carrying a bad energy. So wolves in sheep's clothing. I mean, that's, again, not new information, but we need, it's not new information, but we're not getting it. <laughs> we're not getting it. I've fallen into that as well. I started, uh, there was somebody that I know who, um, who always presented with darkness and it looked like they were starting to change. So I gave them another chance. And then it turned out, oh boy, that was, whew, that was one of the biggest soul lessons I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like, yeah, to not, I don't know. I don't want to say, say don't give people second chances. But if they have, 
shown you who they are, not likely to change, especially if they're a cluster B personality disordered person. Uh, check with an expert on this, but my understanding is that borderline people might be able to heal after some time, but narcissists, they don't tend to, they don't tend to, okay. From a spiritual aspect, they, they've signed away. They signed away and they're not coming back. The best, this is the message I'm getting right now. This is from Michael, Archangel Michael. The best they're ever going to do in this timeline, in this space time continuum is to come to the line, right? These are the ones that call themselves the, the self-aware narcissists and they're out there trying to educate other people on what to look out for. That's, that's what they're, that's their redemption. That's where they're going to get to. But the brain is already wired in the way that it is speaking from a spiritual perspective. Okay. It, it, it is what it is. And that means some of you are going to find out that person that keeps doing these horrible things saying, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. And then you go back in, you trust it and they do it again. That's delicate. That would take hours to discuss that. But I would say there might be some realization at least around that. Like this is not going to change. I keep waiting for it to change and it's not going to change. And then for others, there is going to be, I don't know, okay, so a uh, potential really lovely week, <laughs> right? A lovely week where you finally feel free. Now, if you go through this week and you come back at the end of the week and you're watching this again and you say, nothing happened in my life, nothing, everything was the same old, same old. better buckle up you know why you didn't do the work you didn't do the work and it's gonna slam you and don't blame anybody else because you did it to yourself and you have no choice but to take accountability you have seen this I know you've seen this where people full-on have done something terrible and they're trying to make excuses they're trying to get themselves out of it and then later on they you know turn around and start blaming everybody else projecting onto everybody else it's messy out there, guys. I know that. <laughs> I know that. But we also need to be aware of how this energy is building. We're coming into December as of the recording of this. These are actually timeless, but as of the recording of this, I'm recording this uh, the end of November of 2023. We're coming into uh, what mainstream wise is known as holiday season, right? But for a lot of people who are in touch with the divine, whatever you call that, who are spiritual, who um, find their spiritual wellness through religion. You know, this is a very special, holy time. And when a lot of people engage in that, what do you think happens with angels and archangels of light? They come closer. They can come closer because they communicate through love, the frequency of love. And the more we're in that, right? And the frequency of peace, harmony, grace, the closer we can get to each other and the better we can understand each other. So this is a time, you know how you have like people like, oh, Halloween is their holiday, right? Like <laughs> The veil is very thin and sure the veil is very thin. For people who are spiritual, especially if you work with angels, you know, towards the end of this year, like, you know, probably all through fall and towards the end of the year, uh, this is where we have that same effect with the light and with angels that I'm, I'm sure that's going to, you know, really blow up in some people's egos who really hate religion. Stop. You don't hate the religion. You hate the people, what people have done to the religion. This is part of your self-awareness. Okay. And maybe you don't like how people approach it, but that has nothing to do with people who are genuinely spiritually well and connecting in that way. You feel me? Again, that becomes a big discussion as well. Lots of changes happening this week. Lots of things breaking open. When I say be vigilant, I mean that for your physical safety, your mental safety, 
and your spiritual safety. You don't have to be paranoid, okay? You just need to be aware. And when those realizations come up of maybe I shouldn't judge so harshly, maybe I shouldn't just discredit someone else's connection to God's source, creator of the universe, you know, uh, hang with that and ask yourself where that comes from. This is all a part of this. Again, I do have personal readings available. I do have courses available. You can look in the description box for ways to reach out to me or to book one of those sessions. So we will leave it there for now. I send you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye.